Welcome to the video everyone. If you've clicked here, you're probably interested in using green lanes to explore some of England and Wales' fantastic countryside. Today we're going to talk about how you can do that without finding yourself on the wrong end of a farmer's 12 gauge. This video is split up into sections so you can skip through as you need to. First we're going to take a look at what green lanes are, then we're going to talk about the cheap and the easy way of finding them. We're going to talk about all this before we talk about what bike to use, because the distance of the green lanes from your front door is going to make a big difference as to what you choose. So the term green lane doesn't have a legal meaning. Um, for our purposes it's just an off-road route that we're allowed to use on our motorbikes or in our cars if you're that way inclined. They can look like this, like this, or even like this one which looks more like a muddy footpath than anything else. Typically these routes fall into one of two categories. Very minor unclassified roads with vehicular access which we're going to steer clear of today because they can be controversial, and byways. A byway in the UK is what we call a track too small to be classified as a road, and they come in two types. The restricted byway, which is for foot, bicycle and horse use, and the byway open to all traffic, which is the type we're looking for. It specifically allows the use of mechanically propelled vehicles, that includes our motorbikes or cars. And finally, because he who said the UK doesn't love bureaucracy had obviously found a stash of the good stuff, we need to know about TROs and stopping up orders, two legal methods that local authorities use to prevent you from riding on green lanes. You need to make sure there isn't one in force before you ride the green lane, or you could find yourself having tea with the old bell. But don't worry, in the next few sections we'll talk about how to find this information. So how do you find green lanes without spending any money? The good news is this method is the most correct of them all. Um, this is how you find out absolutely for sure where the way you want to ride actually has a right of way, and you're not going to get yourself in trouble by riding it. Hop over to Google, search for definitive map for your county. I've used Oxfordshire here. The definitive map is the single source of truth for rights of way in an area. Every local authority has to host one, um, and it will differ between whether they're available online, whether they are legally correct online, or whether you have to go to your local authority's offices to view a physical paper map. But if you pop your county in and then give it a click, you'll be taken through to something that probably looks a bit like this. In the case of Oxford, there's a nice colourful map. Blue dashes here represent uh, byways open to all traffic, and if you give them a click, you'll get plenty of useful information about the byway. Length, name, and the additional statement information. There'll be, um, you know, elevations and stuff like that, and if there's anything you need to know about the byway. Very helpfully, also the Oxford map has these, the TROs, or Traffic Regulation Orders, that we mentioned previously marked on it. Again, this is the only place you're going to find this information. Be absolutely confident that it's legally correct. So if you click on these TROs, it's going to show you the details. Um, and so it shows you not only which byways are affected, but it also shows you uh, what the details of the TRO are. Don't always be discouraged by these. Sometimes they simply ban four-wheeled vehicles and motorcycles are still allowed, but in this case, it prevents anyone from using the lane. And uh, if you were to go and use it anyway, you're going to get in trouble. Other counties, like Warwickshire, have a slightly more outdated uh, map. And you'll notice over on the right-hand side here that it says basically it's a scan of the definitive map from 1998, but it has no legal standing. So if you use this and get yourself in trouble, you should have known better. For Warwickshire, they'd rather that you went to their office and viewed the map. They also don't have on here TROs. For that, you have to go to a separate map, um, and on here you'll be able to zoom in. This has uh, roads that aren't green lanes as well. And um, take a look at those TROs. You can give them a click and the information pops up down here. As I said, this is the most legally correct way to find uh, byways open to all traffic and then to find TROs. There's also something called a stopping up order, which councils may um, publish separately or not publish at all. You might have to go hunting for those. Um, but once you've found the map, you found the green lane, you've made sure that there's not a TRO against it, you've made sure it's open, you've made sure there are no restrictions, you should be able to add it to your map and go out and enjoy the lane. We'll take a look at problems that you might have when you get there in a later video. It's also worth mentioning that even if you use one of the solutions we're going to talk about in the easy section, doing this is still the only way, and I'm going to repeat this over and over again, that you can be legally sure that you're in the right. So the absolute easiest way to get into green laning is to get involved with an organisation like the Trail Riders Fellowship or the Green Lane Association. Both these organisations regularly run newbie sessions that you can go along to if you're thinking about joining up, um, and they will show you the ropes of green laning in your local area, they know the tracks and trails like the back of their hand, and they'll help you avoid having to do all the grunt work of figuring out where you can and can't be for the very first few times that you go out. 
Both organisations also have a map. This is the one for the TRF, where they collate the information that we looked at in the cheap section around which routes are available and what their current status is into their own map. This can be incredibly useful, but it is worth noting that this doesn't have any legal standing. So if you rely on it and you come astray, you're still going to be in trouble and you're still going to be told that you should have taken a look at the definitive map. Although this is a brilliant starting place for all the information because it's all put into one place. Both of these organisations do have membership fees, although they're very much worth it, not only for the map that we looked at before, but also for their work in preserving our right to access green lanes. Uh, and so these organisations both campaign and work on our behalf with local authorities and the government to make sure that we retain that access. They also work with local police, landowners, gamekeepers, all sorts, to make sure that the image that we give off as trail riders and uh, Green Lane users is as positive as possible and allows other people to get into the activity and understand what it is we do, not just think of us as a bunch of dirt bike wielding hooligans who go around ripping up the countryside and annoying people on a Sunday morning, so it's very much worth it. So one other useful resource if you're looking for Green Lanes is the Ordnance Survey Maps. Explorer is the closer in map land range of the further out, but both will show byways open to all traffic. You can also subscribe to the online service, uh, which gives you both as part of a subscription and you can view it here in your browser, zoom in and out, it will change um, which type of map you're looking at and as you can see here, these green dots with crosses on represent byways open to all traffic. The usual warning applies though, this is not a legal map um, and it can be out of date, so if it's on here but it's not in the definitive map then it's not a green lane. But this again, like the maps from TRF or Glass, is very useful for getting an overall view because you can zoom out and take a look at the whole country, the whole area um, and understand where there might be byways that you can then go and look up the proper details for to make sure you're allowed to ride them. The subscription costs, uh, I think, is about 30 quid a year. Buying an ordnance survey map costs, obviously, whatever the map does. Although it's worth pointing out that because you can't trust this to be absolutely perfect with reference to the definitive map, buying a slightly outdated ordnance survey map for your area from a local bookshop can be as cheap as 50p a map, and you can draw all over it to put in the details of... Um, local byways that you know and understand you can even write down notes um, in the margins about you know how you found the lane and anything you need to know before you go back there so maybe give the ordnance survey a look um, i have all of these because i like to cross reference them but that's just because i enjoy maps more than being absolutely necessary to get into green learning a quick disclaimer, this has been the bare minimum amount of information you need to start finding and using green lanes. Do your own research, make sure you're legal, and if you're not sure, join an organisation like the TRF or the Green Lane Association because it really helps. Stay tuned for the next part of this video where we take a look at what bike you might use for green laning, how to set it up, what the basics are, and then how to go out and find a green lane and have some fun.